Welcome to Comic Power. I am your host, Comic Killer 72. This segment today is called Wicked Wednesday. If you didn't know, Wednesday is the new release for new comics that come out every week. These are my recommendations for the best books to pick up on Wednesday. I will also name one book to be the speculation pick of the week. Comic publishers are selling a lot of comics this year, and a lot of books are going to second prints, which we're going to get into. First up is The Dark Knight 3, The Master Race number 5 from DC Comics. This is the continuation of the Dark Knight series that is written by Frank Miller and drawn by Andy Kubert. This is part 5 of an 8 part miniseries. Frank Miller writing on Batman is a no brainer pickup. Next up is DC Universe Rebirth number 1, which is now going to a third print. The New 52 was a huge disaster for DC, so they're doing Rebirth and putting Jeff Johns in charge. And he's turning around the whole landscape in terms of the comics and the movies. He's the guy. Sort of like the equivalent of Marvel's Kevin Feige. Next up is Superman Rebirth number one, which is going to a second print. The writer Peter J. Tamazi is sticking around for Rebirth, and that's a good plan. He knows how to interpret Superman. Next up is Green Arrow Rebirth number one, which is also going to a second print. But hold on, there's more. Green Lantern's Rebirth number one is also going to a second print. The ongoing series is going to highlight Jessica Cruz. This character is a Latin female who's joining the Green Lettering Corps. Her first appearance is in Green Lantern Volume 5, number 20, back in 2013. And lastly from DC is Scooby-Doo Apocalypse, number 1, which is also going to a second print. This is a new take on the character with a design by Jim Lee, who is also contributing the covers. I did not recommend this last month, but if you're a Scooby-Doo fan, I can see how this could appeal to you. But in terms of speculation, I just don't quite see it. The rumor mill was saying that Jim Lee was busted down from doing superheroes to do Scooby-Doo because of the failure of the New 52. So with the shakeup at DC of Jeff Johns taking over, it was rumored that Jim Lee was now going to be doing Scooby-Doo as punishment. But it appears that this new take on Scooby-Doo is a hit, so there's no losers in this fight. Next up, let's see what Marvel is up to, and that's going to be Black Panther number 3. This is not only a great superhero action adventure, it's also a stunning political thriller. Tanisia Coates is the writer and Brian Stillfreeze is the artist. They both deserve Eisner's. This rendition of the Black Panther is awesome. The first two issues both went to reprints. I expect issue 3 to do the same thing as well. Next up is Captain America, Steve Rogers number 2. This is the heavily anticipated follow-up to issue number one, where it was revealed on the final panel that Steve Rogers actually was a Hydra agent. The mainstream media picked up on the story. Issue one immediately jumped up to $20 on eBay, and Marvel was flooded with hate mail and even death threats at the writer. I did recommend this book when it came out on May the 25th, and I was aware of the Hydra plot twist, but this is comics. Stuff happens. And then you go through a story arc and they reveal exactly what happened after about four or five issues. So just calm down, folks. In comics, when things like this happen, it always turns out to be a clone or they was brainwashed or, or some other cliche explanation. Next up is the speculation pick of the week. And that's going to be Extraordinary X-Men number 11. This is a continuation of the Apocalypse Wars and they go into the future and one of the four horsemen is Wolverine with a Venom symbiote. I don't think it gets any cooler than that to see a Venom and Wolverine mashup. Previously in issue number eight, when Deadpool was revealed to be one of the horsemen, that issue went up in value. So this may be something similar to that. Next up is Spider-Man Deadpool number one, which is going to a sixth printing. That's one, two, three, four, five, six printing that's unbelievable i haven't seen anything like this since 2014 when miss marvel number one went to a seventh printing and that had a lot to do with the print run being pretty low on her title because no one had any expectation on it but on spider-man deadpool the print run wasn't low it's just that both of these characters together makes the ultimate odd couple and people that don't even buy comics will buy something like this especially after the massive success of the Deadpool movie. Next up is Darth Vader number 22, where he takes on Silo and his cybernetic operatives. Silo was a new character that was introduced in Darth Vader number one shown here. Issue number 22 also has an action figure variant shown here with Silo on the cover. You should be paying extra special attention to the ongoing Star Wars and Darth Vader titles on Marvel because on the movie Rogue One, 
Darth Vader has been confirmed to be in that film and you don't know what other supporting characters are going to be in it. Is it going to be Silo? Is it going to be Afra? You don't know. So you should be picking up every one of these issues. Next up is our report on independent comics and small publishers. First off the bat is Zoe Dare versus the Disasteroid number one from Action Lab Entertainment. This is the story of a professional stunt woman who's the only person that can save the world from an approaching asteroid. That premise is interesting enough to take a chance on this. Next up is May number two from Dark Horse Comics. This is the story of a woman that was fighting monsters in a sci-fi world and now she's come back to the real world and those monsters have followed her here. If you're a World of Warcraft player then you'll really enjoy this. Next up is Joyride number one from Boom Studios which is going to a third printing and this is a variant cover for the third printing as well. This has been a surprise hit but really it shouldn't be because the people behind it are Jackson Lensing and Colin Kelly. These are the same people that were working on Hacktivist and the Maze Runner. If you like the Young Avengers and the Runaways, this is like a mashup of something like that. Issue number one first print looks like this. It's selling for about $10 on eBay right now and it's only going up. So it's not too late to get this if you want to get a first print and not pay too much. Next up is Lady Mechanica and the Lost Boys of West Abbey number two from Benitez Productions. Lady Mechanica is the premier comic about steampunk. If you're not familiar with steampunk, you actually are. You've seen it before, you probably just didn't know what it was. It's a mix of Victorian era looking clothing mixed with new technology and electronics and stuff like that all mashed together. So you have the past and the future kind of blended together in this new exotic look. If you go to Comic Cons and you see women dressed like this, they're taking on the Lady Mechanica steampunk look. So that's what that is. In terms of the comic, it's some of the best drawn stuff you're ever going to see in comics today. Next up is Four Kids Walk Into a Bank number two from Black Mask Studios. After some delays, we finally get issue number two to the sellout on number one. Four Kids is the follow-up of Matthew Rosenberg, who was the writer on We Can Never Go Home, which was a huge success for Black Mask last year. No spoilers here, but Black Mask has a very subversive punk rock type style of writing. This is a five issue miniseries. Go back and get issue number one while it's still cheap and get all five parts because this is comic gold. It's fantastic. Matthew Rosenberg is probably the best new up and coming writer in comics today. Next up and also from Black Mass Studios is Jade Street Protection Services number one. It's the story of five girls that attend the elite private school for magic. And it looks like a mashup of Sailor Moon meets Breakfast Club meets Harry Potter. When Black Mass drops a number one issue, it's always worth picking up to see what it's about. Next up is The Empty Zone number nine from Image Comics. I always recommend this book. It's a fantastic mix of horror and science fiction. It's one of the best books you're not reading. Next up from Image is East of West number 27. This is a series that's written by Jonathan Hickman, one of the best long arc story writers in comics. To catch up what's going on with it, go ahead and pick up the East of West trade paperback while you're out here. It's a collection of the first four issues in Trade Paperback Volume 1. Next up to bat is Dark Souls number 1 going to a third print. This is the comic that's based on the video game. This is a very awesome sketch variant as well. Next up and also from Titan Comics is Vikings number 1 which is going to a second printing. This comic is based on the series that was shown on the History Channel. It is a saga of glory and plunder. You gotta love that. Next up from Valiant Comics, we have 4001 AD number one going to a second printing. And this is unbelievable top tier science fiction. In the year 4001, the island of Japan has separated itself from the rest of the earth. And it is literally floating in the sky. The protector of Japan is the Rai. And that would be this guy right here. The leader of Japan is an artificial intelligence called the Father. Rai discovers that the father is evil and father banishes Rai down to earth. So Rai gathers a team to go try to fight father. I would highly, highly recommend you get this. Next up from Valiant is Bloodshot Reborn number 14. This is part one of a new story arc called Bloodshot Island. Yeah, you should be reading this. And last but not least from Valiant Comics is Exo Men of War number 47. This is part one of the Long Live the King story arc. 
This incarnation of XO ends on issue number 50, and not because of bad sales, but because that's what Valiant does. They'll end a series because there's no other story to tell on this arc, instead of just dragging it out forever. That's about it for today. Thank you for watching Wicked Wednesday, where I review all the new comic books for a new comic day. Be sure to follow my blog at comicpower.net. On social media, follow me at facebook.com forward slash comicpower.net and comicpower-universe.tumblr.com. And don't forget twitter.com forward slash comicpowersub. I also sell comics on eBay at this link. This is Comic Killer 72 for Comic Power saying bye bye. And don't forget to share this video, click on subscribe, give it a thumbs up and tell everyone you know about this channel to help it grow. Thank you for your support.